Hello guys, I hope everyone is doing great and staying safe. I welcome all of you to the fourth webinar in our short course on artificial lift technology. I am Hassan Aleem from Pakistan and currently I study at China University of Petroleum as a master's student. I will be moderating this session today. Our guest and speaker who is well known, Dr. Muhammad Gharib is here with us. Dr. Muhammad Gharib has done PhD in petroleum engineering with specialization in artificial lift and production engineering and operations. Dr. Gharib is petroleum engineering staff member in the Future University in Egypt. Dr. Gharib has over 34 years of experience in oil and gas operations, business and management, sales and teaching. Dr. Muhammad Gharib has remained president, general manager and director for various system and operations companies internationally. For a few years, Dr. Gharib has been actively engaged in practical industry training in different countries, including Canada, US, and the Far East. Dr. Gharib was also the president and membership chairperson for the SPE Egyptian section. He has published and presented over 55 technical papers and for the year 2011 and 2020. Dr. Gharib is the recipient of the SPE Regional Technical Award in Production and Operations. So let's warmly welcome our honorable speaker. Before the session starts, please note down a few things. For your questions, please use the Q&A sections. Don't drop your questions in the chat box. And join our Google Classroom if you have not joined so far, so you can have access to the quizzes and the final exam. Without any delay, I request Dr. Gharib to begin the lecture. Dr. Gharib, the session is over to you. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you, and uh, assalamu alaikum. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all of you. Uh, we'll start also to continue on what we started before for artificial lift technology. I, I'd like just to, to remind you just uh, this is not an advanced course. This is just, you know, it's a fundamental course. And maybe we plan for another advanced course after we finish this and, and so on. This course, uh, as I mentioned before, will cover all types of artificial lift, but as a fundamental, you know, artificial lift system and, and, and so on. Uh, we already covered the road lift before. We cover introduction, means the artificial lift, uh, some road lift system. We, we, we give three lectures about road lift system and still a lot to say about uh, second road or reciprocating pumping system, you know, maybe we need more than 10, 15 and other lectures and so on. But however, you know, we give you all the basics. At the end, if there is more time, maybe we can go a little bit deeper or, or more, you know. And even if you have a question, whatever, regardless what I already presented to you or just not presented to you, please send and maybe we answer. Today, we plan just to go through uh, one of the main important also artificial lift systems. It's called electrical submersible pumping system. The electrical submersible pumping system, it's one of the well-known artificial lift worldwide. At the number of wells, it can be the second type of artificial lift uh, applied in, in, in for, for worldwide. Almost more than 130,000 wells and more of the well lifted by, art, by this type of artificial lift. But at the volume of production, it represents the first type of artificial lift produce a high volume. Majority of, uh, of, of the production coming from this type of artificial lift system. What we plan to cover if there are the times, you know, just some introduction. Then I will go a little bit maybe deeper about the system component uh, surface and, uh, and, and subsurface, some design and selection equipment failure modes, um, some ESP technology, what's the technology in the markets and how we can use this technology to overcome and to solve some problems, you know, like sand, like gas, deviated world scales, uh, uh, several problems really we can find it in the, in, in, in the market just uh, for the oil and gas and so on. At the end, you know, also we can go to some basic optimization troubleshooting. Maybe it's, this is subject can be came before the problem and depends on the time and so on. Introduction. What is the artificial lift 
system usually we covered. We covered, as I said again, I will repeat it for each lecture. Two main categories, two main groups. Formation, pressure assist or mechanical assist. For the mechanical assist, we already covered the road lift system. Today, we plan just to go through the electrical submersible pump, usually it's called ESP, electrical submersible pumping system. What is the electrical submersible pumping system and under what categories of artificial lift it just can be belong? Mainly we said artificial lift, it's either mechanical or gas assist. For the mechanical artificial lift system, we said we have two categories, either positive displacement, like the road lift system, progressive cavity system, or hydraulic piston pumping system, or dynamic displacement, we are, mainly we have two main system are the dynamic displacement, the electric submersible pumping system and jet pumping system, plus the gas assist, gas and plunger lift form and, and so on. Today, as I mentioned, we plan to go through the electric submersible pumping system. The electric submersible pumping system, it's really one of the very important type of artificial lift. Whatever you go, all the white, you will find this system running heavily used in, in Russia, in, in, in Middle East, like in Oman, in Saudi Aramco, and uh, in a lot of areas in USA and, and, and different places, really, you'll find the ESP it's, it, it, it's used. Usually it utilizes what you call multi-stage centrifugal pump. This is the main concept of this one. Using this multi-stage centrifugal pump to lift production fluids to the surface. It's used what? Use what we call centrifugal force. The main concept here is centrifugal force. It's completely different than the road lift system is provocating. It's used displaced float, positive displacement, displaced float, volume after volume. But here it's used another completely concept, different concept. It's called centrifugal force. As I mentioned before, you know, it's the second most used at the number of volts. Worldwide, it's almost more than 130,000 volts running with, with ESP and, and, and the number of volts is growing really steadily because the technology and the envelope of application for this system, it's, it's just increased and will be wide. In the past, all the people know that electric submersible bumping system, it can be used only for, for high volume ones. Yes, it's the best for high volume ones this type of application for high volume wells. But currently due to the technology improvement in technology, even it can be used for low production wells like 150 barrels, 200 barrels up to that, you know, can be used, you know. Uh, road lift, uh, sorry, ESP, it's known as, as one of the more expensive operation uh, for pulling and running. Currently it can be run and pull over what we call cable deployed ESP technology is, is changed. Technology is improved, you know. Let me just, you know, just go through some slide about the basic in order after that to understand the technology. In order to know what's improvement in technology and how the technology change, we need to know the basic of the system. Also. Compared to the other artificial lift system, if you look to this type of, of artificial lift is electric submersible system. It's can used for deep wells, you know, 15,000 or a little bit more years. There is some concern about temperatures, cable lengths, voltage drop in the cable and so on. But however, look to the production, maximum operating volume, you found you can produce, really it's, it's very high volume, like 60,000 barrels per day. There are a lot of wells in the Middle East. It's almost can be produced that in Iraq and in, in, in Saudi Aramco, around 40,000, 30,000. It's, it's a compare, you know, to the other artificial lift is really, it's, it's a very big gap about that, you know. Jet bump can be reached to a little bit high, but it's not reached to that gas lift, but gas lift is required. Uh, very strong wells, uh, very high gas ratio, very high operations. But for wells with a fluid level low, no gas or just, or even water wells, the ESP, it's produced very high volume. For that reason, you know, it's one of the reason ESP usually is using for water wells. 
it's because it can produce high volume. What's water wells? Usually in the desert area, there is no source for water for water injection. And they usually they drill the well in order to produce water to inject in the reservoir. After they are doing some compatibility test and so on, you know, for water and reservoir. Usually ESP, it is one of the system used for that. You know. ESP can be used for high temperature with some precautions, you know, because the motor here, as, as we'll see later on, the motor generated temperature and temperature effect on the motors, performance of motor running life and the cable and so on. Temperature, it's a little bit, you know, must be, you know, selected very well, the, the system while the, we are running in high temperatures. You know. Corrosion environment, it's good. It's not excellent as good because the bump, all the bump, the material of the bump we need to change and the bump is expensive. The material is expensive. The bulk of the volume, the high capital investment in the downhole equipment and downhole equipment, it's just submerged. It could be if there is a corrosive environment will be a little bit, you know, have some problem in, in, in the operating and, and cost, capital cost, uh, initial investment for this one. Gas handling, yeah, currently can be handled a, a very good volume of gas and so it's fair, you know, can be fair even if there is some technology for the bump and bump configuration can be handled high gas and so on. Solids also fair because solids can be destroyed the impeller, can be destroyed the diffuser, the bomb, because remember, this system depends on centrifugal force. And the solids, when we apply some centrifugal force in the solids, it will be much higher impact force in, in the body housing of, of the ESP than the other one. It's also sensitive for the API gravity. Usually it's recommended not to use for low gravity due to high viscosity and so on. One of the major problems for, for, for the P, uh, ESP is the surfacing. Because this usually requires either pulling rig, pulling rig if the well is not deep, but in the majority required work over rig. And work over is the cost operation also. It's required a prime mover, usually electric prime movers. For sure, you know, there's not, the surface equipment is very light. It's not you know, required as very high um, area or so on. It can be excellent application. System efficiency can be reached to 60, but usually, you know, it's less than road lift system, you know, second one after road lift system. It can be, you know, from 35 to 60 percent as a total system. As all type of the artificial lift system, mechanicals, the uh, bombing system. It's required to decrease the bottom hole pressures below the bump. Meanwhile, at the bump, if this is a bump, this is a well, these are fluid levels, this is a tubing, and this is a pump. Here is just at enters, when the fluid enters the bump, called the bump intake, and just after the bump, bump discharge pressures against formation called bottom hole flow pressure and so on. When you are decreasing to the desired production based on your productivity, the flow, the, the, the pressure will be decreased and will be not able to lift flow to the surface. Then at a certain depth, the bomb take that fluids and build another pressure delta B to be bomb discharge able to lift the flow to the surface with a thick wood well head pressure able to move the flow to the separators and so on. This is the main concept for all type of pumping system artificial lift technology or technique and so What advantage for this system? Maybe I already give some hint about advantage when I compare to the other. It's a high volume. As a one type of artificial lift, when we start to look to high volume artificial lift system, usually you are going to ESP as the one of the, your choice. This compared to positive displacement because no one positive displacement system can produce higher than the electric submersible pump system. This for either vertical or deviated wells, regardless, you know, two, two together, you know. Uh, also, there is a variety of size, you know, since you have different 
volume can produce from different dips, different delta B, different discharge pressures, you know. Then you will find in the market bump, very small bump and very big bump, you know, high bump, different size, different capacity size. That means size of the bump, which can be running in the well. Because sometimes you found the well with a slim, you know, slim casing, small casings, and we need a very small bumps just to run inside that. It can be adequate, you know, to four and a half inches casing and, and, and more long, uh, longer and so on. However, currently there is an even smaller bump can run inside the tubing and so on, you know, with a limited, for sure, with a limited production. For the surface equipment, you have a very minor surface equipment. You look to here to the surface equipment, you have a very small piece of equipment compared to the reciprocating saccharoid pumping system and so on. As a limitation, you know, usually, you know, I, I, I strongly recommend when you just start to select your artificial lift system, look to your limitation. Yes, you select based on advantage, but before you go through, try to look what's the limitation. And if this one of these limitations you can find, you can face during your operation or not. One of the limitations, it's not a limitation, just, you know, it can be a requirement, you know, especially in remote area, especially in marginal fields and so on, you know. You need, uh, you, you require a source of high voltage electric power. You need a high power just to source, because this system mainly depends on the electrical power, you know, to operate the downhole system, you know. Then you need high voltage, high voltage, yes. High voltage, either I can step double this using a certain type of transformer or just I can use it from a certain overhead grades or, or so on, you know. Especially, you know, just high power, especially for deep wells, you know. For deep wells, you run the cables from surface to the deep well. Assume that you run for 15,000 feet. Cables, the current while is running in the cable, it's, there is what we call voltage drop, like the flow when it's bathing or just flows inside the pipe. There is a pressure loss here, there is a, a voltage drop, you know, then when the, the, the length of, of your cable increase, the voltage drop increase, then you need more volt at the surface in order to operate the downhole motor, especially downhole motor for ESB is running at high volt. It's required high voltage and so on. The presence of the cables uh, against the tubing strings can be, you know, can be create some problems, especially during pouring and running. With the cables is spliced or just, you know, clamp it around the tubing and tubing running in the casing and the tubing outside diameter or the coupling of the tubing is big. Then the cable is the outside diameter of the tubing plus the cable diameter minus the casing diameter, it's leave a very small area here for the cable to move. If the cable scratch, then the cable will not work. After you run all and you start to run, you will find the short circuits and, and no. Usually, you know, it's not recommended or just, it's not good. It can run, but it's not good for high viscosity fluid and high solids and sometimes very high gas ratio and so on. Temperature is so sensitive to the bump and the, to the motor and the cable. Because the motor itself is generated temperatures and the motor required cooling, you know. If the temperature is increased, then the motor can be have some problem. And even it's getting some problem for the cable and, and so on, you know. One of the, of the problem, you know, for, for ESB, we, we, uh, we'll see in, in later on in some slide, it's have a certain range of production capabilities. If the reservoir production or pressure start to be changed, flexibility of changing the bump, even if you have a variable speed drive at the surface, will be limited compared to the, the, the positive displacement technique pumps like a road lift and, and so on. One also of the major problem in the operating cost is the repair. Usually, the operating cost can be go down or dropped if you are able to repair your equipment at the surface, especially downhole equipment. But if you are not able to repair your equipment at the surface, then you need to send to the manufacturing or some workshop. ECB is not an easy and difficult, especially the motors, you know, to repair in the surface, in the, in the field. And, and uh, you need to send to the 
workshop and so on. The pooling high, it's, you have a very high pooling cost because it's required direct. It's required direct to pool and run, you know, because usually the system is run at the part of the tubing, you know, it's connecting to the tubing and run down whole other part of the tube. What is a component of this system? We said a lot of limitation. Why have a lot of limitation? Have a lot of advantage. Why have a lot of advantage? Then in order to know that, let us to go through system component. What is the system component for this ESP equipment? There's two, two main type of ESP. Either, you know, down home, submersible, electric submersible pumping system, or some, some, some other ESP we'll see later on. It's called surface. Horizontal sum. But now for the electric submersible, which is running in the well like this, this is a well and this is an electric submersible string, you know, we have two main components downhole component and surface component. What is the downhole of all types of artificial lift? You need to have you need to have the bump, especially for the bump. Then there is a bump in the downhole component. What is this? It, uh, what is drives the bump? It's three phase electrical motor. Then I have a motor, is one of them in important part. And then I have the pump. But when between motor and pump, I have what we call the intake and seal section or protectors. I will explain later on what's the function, how to work, all of that. Then I have a multi stage centrifugal pump. I have the motors between the multi stage and centrifugal pump. I have some other devices like seal and pump intake and so on. Plus outside of this system, I have the cables, cable was connecting the power to the motor. This is a motor and this a cable will be outside of the tube. All this down hole assemblies is connecting to the tubing. This is a tubing up to the surface. There's some optional equipment can be used like sensors, you know, a lot of people is running sensor just can be sensed with the pressure, temperature, vibration. A lot of data can take from the sensor since there is an electric cables and they use that electrical cables and we can run a sensor which we can transfer all the data to the surface here and can monitoring all the downhole condition and how, how it's running and how it's going on. For the surface equipment, we have motor controller. This motor, we need something to control starting on and off at a very simple technology uh, and, and see how much current, how much voltage inputs to the motor and so on. I have transformer. This motor is running at very high uh, voltage and I need some sort of transformer to the wheel, plus the wheel head equipment. And so. this is a, the unit or the system, ESP system, which is running in the wheel. We have in the markets what we call horizontal, ESP horizontal electrical, surface pumping system, you know, because this is horizontal pumping, it's not submersible. All the pumping equipment in the surface. Here also I have the motors, I have the floats here, and they have some isolated the float to the motors, and this is a pump here, I can use different size, different configuration. It's the same concept, but it's horizontal. You are used to, to, you know, just to pump fluids from the surface from location to the location to transfer um, all type of fluids and, and so on, you know. There's some application, but it's the same concept. And who's manufacturing the downhole bumps? Uh, ESP is manufacturing the same. Because this bump have the same concept like what is a bump is running hole. The difference here, it's just in this area, motor and, and, and so on. ESP downhole, let us go in downhole components and what is a downhole component and what is downhole component. If you look to this string, this is the downhole assembly for the ESP system. What are the main component for that? First component is a bump. I need to have the bump. Second, I need to have the intake while the fluids can be go through to the bump because the bump have no hole outside, but I have, I need to have something here just like a manifold to allow the flow to go to the bump and prevent the flow to go down and so on. What else? Seal section. Seal is isolated between the bump intake and the motor. Motor is electric. And usually the electric cannot be running with the fluids, with, with especially, you know, like a water or some uh, flow can have some conductivity to electricity. You know. Then you have a seals. 
between the intakes and the motors. Plus, I have the motors. Then you have bump, intake, seal, motor. What else? How the motor is running? Is motor running by electricity? Who's transfer electricity from surface to, to the bump? It is electrical cables. It's a cable. Like in the road lift system, who's transfer the reciprocating motion from surface to down all bump? It is a road string. Here, who tra who's transfer the electricity from surface to the down hole bump? It is a motor itself. Then, after that, all that is connecting to the tubing string up to the surface. If you look to here, you know, we found also some could be, you know, you can use or cannot be used, like some optional equipment, like a sensor, like check valves, drain valves, a lot of equipment, maybe we can talk about it later on, and so on, you know. Then, like road lift systems, there is a chain. Chain here was five main components. Power cables, pump, intake, seal, and motor. If one of these is chain broken, the rest will not broken, or we can have a failures from the other. Suppose that the, the cable have broken and, and they have cut in that cable or just one, one wire of the cable. No power will reach to the motor and the system will not run. Suppose the seal system have some problem and broken, then the fluids can be go to the motor. The motor will be burned and the system can be, cannot be run. And so on. Then the chain of just a chain, like, you know, if one of these main components have some failure or broken, the rest maybe is not work and, and so on. Let us start with the heart of each artificially lift pumping system. It is a pump. The pump is the heart for all type of artificial lift pumping system. The pump, it is the first part of electric submersible pumping system connecting to the tubing. There is different way how to connect to the tube. Then, I just after the tubing, it is a pump. You know, it's the first part connecting to the tube. The pump is a dynamic displacement. Remember, we have a positive displacement and dynamic displacement. I will explain now what's, what's the dynamic displacement and so on. It's a dynamic displacement, multi-state centrifugal pump, if you want to define, just to introduce. The ESP bomb, you can say it is a dynamic displacement multi stage pump. What's mean of multi stage and what is a multi stage and what's a dynamic answer? It's attached to the tubing string. There's a different way. It was bolted on, discharged head, straight on, depending on manufacturing technology, your well condition, your completion types, uh, what we have down hole at the completion, and so on. You know, you can have this as a connection to the tubing and so on. The bump is producing a total dynamic head. How it's a bump is producing a total dynamic head? There is inside the bump, there's a shaft here. You know, it's converting the shaft horsepower, shaft is rotating, it's converting the shaft horsepower to velocity energy. Since it's converting to velocity energy and velocity energy, it's just converted to the fluid and the fluid moved to the production, you know, just it's moved the fluid outside and then up inside the pump. Then it's converting the horsepower to fluid velocity, which move the production fluid up to the tube. Then each stage on the bump, just you are compressed, each bump have more than one stage. Why? I will explain later on why I must have more than one stage. Uh, for the bump. It's not like one plunger, one traveling valve, one send it. No, each state have a different work, uh, have a certain work for that reason. I need more than one stage. However, if you look to here, it's an operators in the workshop, it's stacking the stage, this is stage, this is stage, this is stage, this is stage, this bump stage, this bump stage, this bump stage, stacking in a housing. This is outside the meter, it's called housing and so on. Then at the end, if you have cut away in the bump like this, you know, you found this is a shaft of the bump and this is stage. Each one of these is a stage. Each one of these is a stage. Then the bump for the three is called multi-stage. You have more than one stage, multi-stage centrifugal pumps. 
what is the main component of the stage? Usually stage have three main components. Whatever type of stage, huh? there's different type of stage, but generally speaking, all type of stage have three main components usually. One is called impellers, and we have a diffusers, plus we have a washers, or just first washers between impellers and the diffusers. Each stage have the same configuration. Each stage have the same configuration. Okay, what is the function for each of that? The impeller imported velocity energy. This shaft is rotated. The impellers here is just key to the shaft. The shaft rotated, the impeller rotated, and for that reason, the impeller import velocity energy to the flow. There is a flow that's going to the impellers, then imported velocity energy to the flow. And this velocity energy is converted to pressures energy. Then you have two convert convertation here. Velocity, energy, and pressure energy. Impellers is imported velocity energy to the system, which is reached to the diffusers, and diffusers converted to pressure energy allow the flow to go to the surface. And so the type or geometry of the stage, you have different stage. Either the type, the size, the geometry of the state, it's just control the volume. Then when I say, okay, you have this geometry of the state, you have this size of the stage, and so on, it's controlled what? It's controlled the volume. One stage can produce, for example, 10,000 barrels per day. A hundred stage can produce the same, 10,000 barrels per day. But what is the difference? The number of stage it's just, you know, determine how much pressure, how much delta B the unit must be built, you know. Because each stage is built a certain value of the head, of, of, of just lifting head or the pressure based on certain flow. The number of stage gives me a height, head, but size and configuration of the bomb gives me the sizes. There is different type of stage geometry. However, the main common stage geometry either can be radial flow, mixed flow, or axial flow. But the main common use, radial and mixed flow. And what's the difference? I will show you some pictures about this later on and so Then, let me explain what's mean of the impellers and the shaft converted fluids uh, to velocity, uh, energy, and so on. What's mean of centrifugal, why it's called centrifugal bomb, how centrifugal force and so on. The word of centrifugal mean anything tending to fly from the center. If you have something in the centers and they start to rotate, anything fly from centers to out, it's called centrifuge, centrifugal and so on. What is centrifugal force? How much force you are given in that direction away from the center? Yes, centrifuge, centrifugal, it's flying things tends to fly from center, but with how much force, this is centrifugal force, then how much force you are given to this fluid or just to things or to particles, whatever, in order to fly out of the surface is called centrifugal force, centrifugal force. Based on that philosophy, the centrifugal machine, it's built, you know. Then centrifugal machine, it's built on the same concept. Our Elect our submersible pump here is a centrifugal pump. One of these centrifugal machines. Our pump called centrifugal pump and centrifugal machine. It's almost like, you know, if you are going just uh, in a vacation with your, with your friend and so on, and you have, you are playing this one. Why, when you, while it's rotating, you go outside. When the speed is increasing, you go out and out. And when you start to stop, you start to go back again and so on. When you start to rotate, there is a centrifugal force pushing this body outside. And so when the velocity increased, the, the centrifugal force, it's increased. It's almost the same concept for our submersible downhole pumps. This is a bump shaft, and this is the impellers of the bump shaft. When the impellers, when the bump shaft is rotated, the impeller is rotated, if there is a fluid coming from the bottom here, you know, of the impeller, 
and these rotating impellers taking the float and sending out, you know, with centrifugal force based on the velocity, what I have here, and based on the a lot of things, and different factors affecting here with this centrifugal force and so on. Then the fluid is coming from one area, from the bottom of the centrifugal going out for the impellers, you know, from what you call diffuser, the impellers go out and just with a certain force. What is a stage? And how is construct the stage of the downhole bounds, of the downhole bounds? What does it mean for configurations? How it's working and so on? In a very simple way. And the most common type of stage, you know, the standard stage, what we call, all the stage have two main parts, plus the washers and, and you know, the third up thrust washer and so on. But the other two main parts, which one creating the, the, the energy and velocity for me, it's one of them, one of the main parts called the impellers. This is just the shape of the impeller and this cut way of that impeller you know, to, to show you from inside how it looks like, uh, how it looks like, like this. The fluids enter from this eyes, called this eyes from here and go out in this one fluid, enter from the bottom and go out from this one fluid, enter from the bottom and go out in this one. The impeller is keyed. The impeller here is keyed to the shaft. It's fixed with the shaft, you know, and rotate about the axis with the shaft. When the shaft is rotated, this is impeller is rotated. Since the impeller is rotated and shaft is rotated, what if I have a fluid coming to the impellers from this point, from this e eyes, from this area down? If the fluids enter to the impeller through the eyes near to, to the sha shaft here, you know, and exit the impeller on the outside, come from here and exit from the outside. The impeller takes the fluid and imports kinetic energy to its comporting kinetic energy to the fluids and transfer to like a velocity energy and velocity just to go out. Then I need something here just, you know, to hit, to stop this float and to change the directions to be aboard. I don't need the fluids to go in that direction. I need the flow to go up to the well, outside of the world, and I need the flow to go in this direction. Then the second part in order to complete the cycles here is called the diffusers. What are the diffusers of the, of the bounds? This is a cross section of the diffusers. The diffuser is not rotated, it's just connecting by certain ways, by the washers and knots and I think, I think certain ways here, and just connecting to <laughs> the, the system as it is, you know, uh, as shown in this picture. The diffuser does not rotate, and it's turned fluid, fluid. When it's come to the diffusers, you know, here it's coming from the diffuser and turn it to the impellers. The impeller sends the fluid again to the diffuser. The diffuser sends the impeller to, uh, to send the fluid to the diffusers and so on. You know. Then the diffuser converts the kinetic energy, which already imported up and, and, and generated by the impeller, the fluid velocity, and produced by the impeller into potential energy, into heat. Take all that energy and convert it to heat. Then each stage have a certain heat based on the geometry, size, types, and of, of your impeller and diffuser. One impellers and diffusers, two together, it's called one stage. Is an impeller plus diffuser is called the bump stage, one stage, and so on. Then each stage have impeller and diffuser and called one stage. And, and it's connecting in this direction, in this way. This is just animation to show you how it's working. Here, impeller spin and give energy, you know, to the fluid, which exits around the outside, and the fuser redirected. This is the fluid up, you know, of the next impeller, then from the fuser to impeller, from impeller to the fuser, and go on up to resources. Then from impeller to the fusers, the fuser to impeller, and and so on. 
as I, as I, I mentioned before, there is different geometry. What I, I already explained before, you know, this is what we call standards, you know, just standard stage, standard type of stage of the bomb. ESP are available in different stage geometry. There is two main geometry, it's mainly common use. There is more than two, two geometry, but the commonly common use geometry worldwide, what we call the radial flow and mixed flow, radial flow and mixed flow stage. Each one have different type of how it's directed flow. If you look to the radial flow, flow discharge relative to the impeller in 90 degree. It's going from impellers and go 90 degree to the shaft. Flow, it's just going out of the, of the impeller to the diffusers in 90 degree of the shaft. It's why here just in the mixed flow, it's going with a different angles can be less than 90 degree, you know, 45, 60, 120. Depends on you know, configuration types and so on. This is a cross-section area of how it looks like. The, uh, this is a radial uh, flow, and this house looks like this is a mixed flow and pillars and so on. Okay. Here, just, you know, another, in another way, another just cut away in the type of flow, radial flow, mixed flow. There is something called those axial flow, while the direction is parallel to the shaft. It's not commonly used, but it's a market, depending on bull condition and depending on manufacturing technology and so on. However, you will find in the market a lot of technology for the impeller diffuser stage, but the more common used is these two types, plus some other, you know, and, and so on. Then let us to go also about what is the configuration of the bomb, downhole configuration. The bomb as a construction as the outside diameters, the, the bomb construction in different outside diameters, based on one, based on the stage size, stage configuration, and so on, you know. And this bomb, if you look to the top of this bomb, it's bolted or connecting different, you know, in different way, you know. It's bolted or connecting to what? To the tubing. And the bottom and the bottom of the bump can be either a standard connection, just a port to allow flow to enter to the bump, or sometimes we can use what we call gas separators as a pump intake. Then the top of the bump, it's connecting bolted or threaded to the tubing. Bottom of the bump is connecting to what we call intake. And this intake can be either normal intake if there is no gas, standard intake, just a port, or like a manifold, or a separator, which separator is usually used to separate a gas before entering to the bomb, to reduce the volume of the gas entering to the bomb, to increase the bomb volumetric efficiency, and so on. Then the top of the bomb just can be like this, what we call bomb head. The bomb head can be ported, while we have another similar shape like this is just connecting to the tubing with a thread and the other sides will be in this direction, you know, and connecting to the bump, which is connecting also, fix it here as a shaft. Plus in the bottom of the bump, which is connecting to the base of the bump, which is connecting to the bump intake, can have something housing like this. This is connecting to the bump and this part connecting to the shaft of the bump and this part bolted to the base to the intake of the bomb, which can be normal intake or just a separators and so on. What is the make of the bomb? We talk about the bomb, it's a centrifugal bomb, multi-stage bomb. Each stage have two pieces, uh, mainly impeller diffusers and plus some sort of bearings, uh, washers between this one bomb hub available in different configuration, different size, uh, and, and, and the stage have different geometry and so on. What is connecting to the bump? What the next items in the downhole? It uh, is PS symbol and connecting to the bump. Another piece is called pump intake. Pump intake from the word intake, that's the, 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 the bump which is taking the fluid and to entering to the bump. It takes the fluid from the bottom of the well and just it takes the fluid from the well and allows this fluid 
to pass to go to the bottom. Then the intake is a section. Where is attached intake? The base, the top of the intake is attached to the base of the bottle. Then the top of the intake attached to the base of the bottle. What usually it's mainly it's providing enterings to the fluid to the bottle. The main function of this is standard intake to allow fluid to enter to the bottle. And it's connecting to the bottle from the bottom, then the bottle connecting to the top of the this intake can be this, this intake can be either standard intake if there is no uh, gas in the well of, or if they produce water well and so on is a standard intake or can be a gas separators since it will be intake and, and allows the fluid to be intake and, and, and go to the pump this can be like a gas separators and the gas separator to separate high volume of the gas and before entering to the bump in order to improve the bump volumetric efficiency. If I use a standard intake, a standard intake, no separate, usually this intake should be screened out, you know, just put some screen, some filters on that one, just to, you know, just to reduce the amount of volume of debris sands can be entered to inside the bump and, and so on. Then this intake, as I said, can be standard or can be gas separators. Since it's a centrifugal bump and rotating, then the best gas separator for artificial lift usually it's used with the ESP uh, system because you it's using the centrifugal force, the rotation of the shaft, which can be separated the gas. There's different type, different geometry of this one. However, in a very simple way, at low gas or ratio wells, it can be used as static gas separators, depend on the gravity segregation. It's one similar like the one used with the road lift system, but here it's not commonly used because I have a rotation. Why I not use a, the rotation function and, and the advantage I have it, and I use a separator like this one, you know, just what you call centrifuges, dynamic gas separators. Dynamic gas separators just can be helping in, in just separating a lot of gas. But however, whatever type of gas separators, it's used, you know, is a very important. You need to notice this one. Don't design or operate a gas separators under a bucker. If you have the bucker, you don't need to have a gas separator because we see in some areas, so in some area, people start maybe by mistake or something like that. It's install a gas separator below the bucker. Unless, unless, the backer have some venting technology. This can be vent some gas, but you know, it's not practical to you to use that. Or just, you know, if, if you have some gas separator below the backer or the surface venting is closed, there is no vent at the surface, then where the gas will be go and so on. This is just a hint for you. After the separator, you know, we said that you have a bump, below the bump, I have intake, fluids. Then I have a fluids and intake. If I connecting the motor direct, this is a bump, and this is an intake, and this is a motor. This motor is a high electrical motor, high power. If I connecting the bump to the motor, and usually the motor have a shaft, and the motor shaft should be connecting to the bump shaft or intake shaft to rotate the motor. What will happen for the fluids, for the produced fluid, especially if there is a water? It will go to the motors. What will happen for the motors? The motors will be burned. For that reason, you know, for all electric submersible pump, you need to have a protection for the motor. You need to have a seal between the fluids and the motor, the produced fluid and the motor. You need to not allow the produced fluid to contact the motors in order not to burn the motors. And that seal is called seal or protectors to protect the motor and so on, or seal just to seal the fluid and so on. And it's, it's installed just below the bump intake and above the motors, between the bump intake and the motor. If this bump intake separator, then below the separators and the motor and so on. How it looks like, this is a bump, this is an intake, this is an intake, and this is a seal or the protectors of the download. Then the seal, also called the protector, the main function 
or the main purpose of this protector is to protect the motor. I run the seal to protect the motor. If I don't need to protect the motor, I don't need the seal. Then the main function of the seal to protect the motor. Protect the motor from what? From different things. You know. First of all, there is five things, you know. There is more than that, but initially there is five things. Isolate and protect the motor from well floats. Then it's not allow the well floats to reach to the motor. Second, expansion of the motor oil. Usually the motor, when it's constructed and built the motor, there is an oil inside the motor. And if the motor is closed 100% and, you know, it's, it's, it's not have some, uh, what you call venting for the oil inside, this oil usually is incompressible fluids. And usually the motor generated heat and uh, when it's running. And if it stops, the heat is just it's in the go down. The heat will expand it, will, 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 will allow the flow to expand. And just in order to avoid thermal expansion, just in, in, on this one, just the, 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 the intake, it's helping just to take some of the fluids which can be expanded in the motor. What if this motor from expansion and cooling expansion and, and cooling like this start to decrease the flow? Then this also seal filled with the fluid which can be compensating some of, of the fluid, can be colliding the pressure between these and that also. Also the, the shaft of this is uh, seal is just transfer the rotary motion, the torque from the motor to the uh, to the to the intake or, or, and then to the bomb and so on. Sorry. There's different types, you know, just maybe it's we can cover the type in details uh, while in our advanced course, but there is different types of the C part, C elements of the uh, ESPs and so on. Here just, you know, the second important part in the ESP assembly, downhaul assembly, it's what we call the motor. What is a motor? What's the function of the motor? The motor is one of the main complicated, one of the main important part, one of the main source of the problem downhaul of, of the bump. If there is a problem, it can be the first part can be affected by that problem. Usually, in general speaking, the motor is bolted to the seal. It's okay. And it's providing horsepower. Usually, the motor should be uh, bigger enough to provide the horsepower to rotate not only the pump, to rotate the whole system. Then take <coughs> the seal if there is a separator and so Then the motor is required to rotate all that. The motor is converted to the electric power, what is received via the cable is electrical power, is converting to rotation, turn all the bottom hole assembly, down hole. You know. ESP motors are built on different voltage and, you know, amperes, you know. And built on voltage that's typically range from 460 up to 4,000. Usually the lower volts for subsurface bump and it's not easy to find really unless for very shallow ones can be 460 volt up to 4,200. Also currently maybe some, some few motors built for higher than that. And at 60 or 50 Hertz, you know, either 60 Hertz or 50 Hertz can be built if there is a fixed speed in that. Motor can be run in tandem. What's mean in tandem? It can be run two motors together to increase the capacity. If I reach to the maximum capacity for one motor, I can put two motors, you know, together like tandem motors and so on. Motor is complicated, not an easy, and mainly is electric. The motor, it's electrical and electric configuration is required and uh, uh, very advanced electrical background, electrical engineers to know. But we as a designer, we are as a, as a petroleum engineering, uh, we as an artificial lift uh, engineers and so on, we need to understand what is the motors, how it's running, uh, how to protect the motors, because the motor from inside have different components. If you look here, different components of the motor, have different winding of the motors, have shaft, have uh, different things of the motor, have different insulations even 
inside the motor, how to protect the motor, how to give a steady current to, to the motor, how to operate the motor, you know. Mainly, I need to understand the basics. I need to understand the motor is not an easy. Why the motor is not able to repair at the field? Because if you look to the motor here, really it's complicated. It's not an easy. It's motor is work as, at a very high volt, very high tem uh, temperature, very high uh, amperes, you know, and so on, you know, very high horsepower. It's not an easy, you know. There's a different type of motors. This is a general motor, what we call two pole motors and so on. Plus in the market, you know, just newly in the market, there's different, another type of motor. Maybe we'll not cover in details, but I, I just give you some hint about this motor because maybe we need, why, when we start to go design the progressive cavity bump, what's called permanent magnet motor. The permanent magnet motor is, is different than the motor, which is, it can be run at very low speeds. Usually, the normal motors, the standard motors, induction motors, usually is running at very high speeds. You know. But permanent magnet motors can be run at very low speeds, which can be generate a high torques and and so on. And the motors you know, for the motor for the system, you know, it's expensive. For sure, it's expensive, but it's more, you know, it's more efficient in the market. Uh, a lot of all the case study and application is proof that the permanent magnet motors, it's, you know, it's more efficient than that. The difference here, you know, you have a rotor windings, there is no windings, there is a magnet here in this one, you know. We can cover this in, in some details in advanced course, how it looks like, how it's working. It's more expensive, but it requires the variable frequency drive in order to run these motors and so the motor, as I said, when you said motor and we look about ESP motor, you need to rate it by horsepower, volt, and current. You say this motor have X horsepower, X volt, and X current. This is usually the name of the motors. How to rate it, the, the name of the motor, how to rate it, the motor. At a constant voltage, and same constant voltage, if you change the load or brake horsepower applied to the motor, the current the current required to rotate that motor will be changed. At a constant load, by varying voltage, if I change the volt, current also will varying as well and so on. However, you know, just all that's, it's mainly it's electrical, but are we are artificial lift designer, artificial lift engineer, we need to understand. Because sometimes, you know, just at the field, if I have some motor problem, frequent problem, order to troubleshooting that, I need to understand what problem we have, what a change in the condition, what a factor affecting in the motor performance, motor running life, which can create this problem, what performance, what parameter affecting with the bump, which can be making my bump running life is very short and so on. Motor, one of the very important factors for the motor is interest. And usually, uh, you know, some people ignore this in the fields. And this can be created a lot of problem. A lot of failure analysis for the downhole system or downhole motors or ESP system is resulting from inadequate motors running around, uh, inadequate temperature running around the system, the motor. The motor temperatures is controlled by five factors. The motor itself, if you have any motor running either at the surface, you know, if you have any motor, even a motor for your car, you know, one is running and put your hand in the front of your car, if the temperature is increased, stop the car temperature going down. Same for the motor. But this motor creating or generating very high temperature because the horsepower here is very high. The amp is very high. The volt is very high. If you keep this motor, because this motor is running for 24 hours, you know, for a year, two years without stop, you know, and if you keep this continuous at very high temperature, for sure the motor will be better. In order to just keep some cooling around the motor and increase the running life of my motor, what I need, I need to understand what the factor, what temperature factors affecting on the motors and, and so on, you know. One of the factor is one of the very important factor is the well poor temperatures. The temperature of the fluids around the motors. 
the fluids come from the formation with a certain temperature. And usually formation, for an example, if it's at depth 6,000 feet or 2,000 meters, temperature can be around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. 200 degrees Fahrenheit, in temperature here will be 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Plus the temperature generated by the motors, then the temperature here will be very high. It's not effect or even on the motor, even in the, in the cables, you know, even in some other parts here in the system. What else, you know? The percentage load versus name plate load. This motor, for example, is a name plate loaded for all the motor, 100 horsepower. And usually I always loaded my motor with each 90% of each name plate load. Always the load in the motor 90%. And instead of 100 horsepower, this is just a normal I have 90, 95. Then the load is always high on the motor. Higher loads, higher temperatures. This is one of the very important factors. Another thing is for the, the temperature here. The temperature here, if I stop these static temperatures, you know, and the motor temperature will be static. And if this is static fluid will transfer to the fluid, then temperature around the motor will be this temperature plus this temperature, or just the average temperature of the pose and so on, you know, the average temperature of, of this and so on. Then in order to have some cooling, I need just always the temperature of the motors is go out from this area. How I can the temperature of the motor to go out of this area? Then I need the fluid, which is pass around the motor to carry the temperature, the hot fluid to go up and and compensating with another fluid from the formation, another fluid from the formation. And for that reason, you know, it is a, what you call fluid velocity past motor. How fast velocity of the fluid past the motor? If the flow is past the motor is very high, then it's carrying a very high temperature from around the motor and keeping always the temperature around the motor, it's a bottom hole temperature, the fluid temperature. But if the temperature, if the flow is slow, then just moving the temperature or just reducing the temperature will be a very low and so on. You know. Then cooling properties of the flow, what type of fluids here? What is the cooling properties? It's a gas, it's a oil, heavy oil, light oil, the motors and so on. Also the power quality going to the motors, power quality from the surface. If the power quality is just, you know, fluctuated, have some problem, then the motor will not running in standard condition. Then the power quality fluctuation, voltage fluctuation, and so on will affect and create more temperature. Then always I need to have the fluid on the motor temperature in a very good way as per the design temperature. What happened if this area, it's big area? I run my system in a big area and so on. And they have a low fluids, it's low production. Low production is the fluid velocity here will be low. Then the cooling velocity here will be very low because the fluid velocity is a proportional to the area and the flow rate. If I have a big area, low flow rate, then the area will be big and the speed, the fluid speed will be low. In this case, what we have, what we need, usually, you know, they are looking to what we call what we call fluid or just motor shroud. Shrouded motor like a casing, like a housing. You are installed around the motors and around the system up to the over the intake of the pump. Then the fluid instead to go in this area will go between the motor and the shroud. The motor and the shroud, the main function to reduce the area to reduce the annular area here. And the fluid when it's passed here is passing with a high velocity until it reach to the intake of the bump. Then the shroud should be covered all the bottom hole assembly up to the top of the bump intake, which is forcing the fluid to go in this area between the motor and the, the shroud and so on. Okay. What is the last part in downhole equipment? The last part in the downhole equipment, it's called the power cable. What is a power cable? And why is a power cable is used? The power cable is used to transfer the current from the power source to the motor. 
since it's transferred from the power source to the motor, there is different area I transfer the power to. First of all, the surface. Then the cable required at the surface should be different than the cable at the downhole. The cable at the motor at the bottom hole assembly, which is contacting to the motor, to the flow, to the high temperatures in low, in low area, this cable also is different than this cable. And so then in the market, the cables, the ESP cables, you know, have different type of cable. What we call surface cable, well head feed through cables, main power cable, motor lead cables, and boot head cables. In the next lectures, I will try to go through each type of cables, what's the construction of cables, why I use cable in this configuration, different configuration. I found the cables, what we call round cables, I can, I can find the uh, flat cables and so on, you know. Usually, as I said, you know, the cable, it's carrying the current from motor controllers from the surface to the motor. And in, in general, there is two cable configuration, flat like this, like this one, like this one, or round cable like this one, or like this one, almost round cables in this one. Usually it's available in different size. I will explain in the next time what's the difference between each size and what's mean of the cable size and so on. You know. uh, Hassan, you know, just uh, I like to stop here because this is, you know, mainly have some more electrical parts and, and so on. The first question, how can we select the right ASP required for certain well? Yes, it's a good question, you know. Uh, I will cover this later on while I design, but just let me get, give you some hint about, you know, in order to select the right ESP, you know, just uh, uh, we need just to know what my bottom hole conditions, what the challenge I faced uh, in this was, you know, uh, what is the pressures, if there is a gas, uh, how volume of the free gas is about, if there is a sand, what the sand configuration and what the sand size I have in the well. What the volume is required? What is what we call total dynamic heads and pressures and, and required to lift these floats? Uh, what type of completion, what type of casing to do that? Uh, do I plan to use this as a ECB for a depletion drive walls or just for, uh, for active drive walls? Is there is uh, a potential for the reservoir to go down, then I need to select a pump with a, a flexibility and you know, change the pumping parameter or not. However, to select first choice, first select, you need to select the pump which can produce your production at its highest efficiency. What's the highest efficiency of the pump? We'll see this later on why we will design the pump and the pump performance curve, how it looks like and how to select the pump. What about bottom hole conditions? Bottom hole condition, how to select the motor, how to select the volt uh, going to the motor and, and uh, how to select the cables, what size of the cables, because a lot of factor really is going to, to, to affect on selecting of the artificial lift. There is, you know, sessions about selection and design about the, the ESP, especially bottom hole configuration, starting from motors, starting from uh, uh, bumps, intake, what type of intake I need, what type of uh, bumps, what type of, of, of just not only the bumps, even the, the impellers, even the stage, configuration of the stage of the bump, uh, what, what all that, you know, just I need uh, to know. Do I need a variable speed drive in the surface? Do I need also sometimes some accessories? Not only, you know, what I, I mentioned, I, I, I just presented to you, these are very basics, you know. There's some accessories, you know, down hole. Do I need what we call, uh, I run just a bypass um, down hole? Do I need just to run some sensors or some vibrations? Do I need to run check valves? And so on, you know, there is a lot of factors. First of all, I need to know what's the challenge in, 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 in my area, in my wells and so on. Okay, yes. the second question is um, uh, about heavy oil. Uh, yes. So, uh, Muhammad Yunus asking about uh, heavy oil, how much standard heavy oil can be uh, operated in ASP? 
and he asked also about uh, especially when the level the fluid level is 1500 meter dfl Yes, the fluid level is 1,500 meters, but this, you know, what's the fluid over the bump? You know, 1,500 meters, what's the fluid over the bump? The, fl the viscosity... You know, yeah, the, the, the heavy crude oil has a valid important factors. You know, the fluid was... Uh, please, uh, I mean, uh, it seems like you changed your position, so the sound, your voice uh, is not clear. So try to um, uh, repeat the answer from the beginning. Yes. Uh, his answer from the beginning, he says that the fluid level is 1,500 feet, you know. Yes, it's 1,500 feet, but how much fluid over the bump? 1,500 feet is... It's asking 1,500 meters. Or meter, 1,500 meters is, 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 is deep fluid level. How much also meet, how, uh, uh, how much meters over the bump? 1,500, it's, it's very high, you know, just as, as a pressure loss, as a viscosity to create it, you know for that, what's the bottom hole temperatures, you know? And, and you know, uh, what type of stage I need because viscosity is affecting on a lot of things in this area you now. And with the 1500 meters, the net lift will be a very high, especially, you know, if you have a smaller tubing, especially if you have a high volume of, 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 of liquid, you know, how much pressure loss will be over the bump. And you require the special design configuration. It can be run. It's, um, I cannot say it cannot be run. It can be run, run, but you need to consider a lot of factors downhole for this one. How, f how fast the fluids will pass f around the motors, you know, and so on. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the, the last question someone, uh, uh, Ahmed, uh, uh, is asking, uh, is a sh uh, Schroed used Shroud, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, used for a sand problem too? For sand? Uh, yes, I, I understand his question because shroud, you know, with the sand and the velocity will be high, then the carrying capacity of the sand for velocity will be high. You know, sometimes you need to, you know, just to, to look to all the problem down holes. Uh, if I want to use a shroud with the sand, uh, what type of shroud I need to use? If I force it, use trousers, it's not recommended, huh? you know, just to, to be honest speak. But if I use to use shroud with the sand, I need before to use shroud to see how can I design the bomb? Can I, I avoid to use a shroud with the sand and so on? Because shroud with the sand is a problem. Because the shroud, mainly important to the shroud function to increase the speed. Sand with the fluid, with increasing the speed will will be a problem for the motor and we can be making some erosions problem down hole and can have some major problem. There is a lot of precaution while we are using shroud with the sand you know, and what type of shrouds, what, how is the shroud intakes down hole will be looks like, do I need to install something before shroud and so there's a company in Midland and a lot of company really they have a very good design for this technology you know. Uh, to, to use some shroud with some sand separation and so on. Dr. Gharib, uh, thank you very much. It was amazing session as usual. And for sure, we will see you on uh, Thursday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.